Greetings, Board Game Geeks. Happy Saturday. I'm Brian Hazard from Game Spasm, and this is your Saturday Spasm on Gamerati. I'm going to talk today about a game I've known about for a couple of years, but I'm guessing you haven't heard of yet. This game is called Where's My Chainsaw by Devious Mind Games. I'm excited because I know that this game is actually going to get released on Game Crafter next month, August of 2017, and will be available for you to get your hands on. Uh, I'm pretty fond of it. I like it quite a bit, so I wanted to spend a little time today telling you why I think you would probably be fond of it and why you should pick yourself up a copy. Where's My Chainsaw is an homage to Munchkin by Steve Jackson Games, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Munchkin. People who have been playing games for a long time often will write uh, Munchkin off because they'll say that it's gotten too random or it's too formulaic. So Where's My Chainsaw is an attempt to sort of uh, remedy some of the things that people don't love about Munchkin, and I'm not say Munchkin is bad, and when I make these comparisons, I'm not by any means trying to uh, uh, besmirch uh, Munchkin if you're into that game. But I do think that this is a better game. One of the big difference between Munchkin and Where's My Chainsaw is that Where's My Chainsaw is intended to be much less random and a lot more strategic. They take a lot of the random elements out of the game. So for example, instead of everybody just trying to get 10 levels, Every player has their own uh, personal win conditions. They have great stories on the back. Uh, you know, Jisoo needs to have four items that are called antidotes in her uh, on the table in front of her. If she does that, she wins the game. This guy needs to have weapons equaling 20 points of combat bonus, items and weapons. You, you, there's more strategy involved in looking what everybody else at the table is doing and seeing whether or not they're moving towards their own personal goal. The other thing that's different is that there are no traps in Where's My Chainsaw, which means that every other player at the table has to bear a greater responsibility for playing those take that cards and adding to combat and, and doing things to each other to make the game interesting. And I think that that's beneficial. It definitely adds to the player commitment to the game and the involvement in the game on other players' turns. The other thing is that you never fight a monster by accident. In Where's My Chainsaw, you only fight monsters by choice because they exist in their very own deck. Over here you have special cards, and they're called special because these are the only cards that ever go in your hand. Sometimes that is a confusing aspect of Munchkin, as to which cards you put in your hand and which cards go on the table. These are the only cards that ever go in your hand, and that's why they're called special. And this deck is filled with all sorts of cool things that you can use uh, on yourself or on other people. Most very often you'll find a play immediately that lets you get a weapon, and that lets you draw a weapon out of the deck, which gives you a combat bonus that helps you towards beating up the monsters in the game. The monsters in the game are have different levels, levels 1, 2, and 3, so they get harder as the game goes on. The weapons also get better as the game goes on. You start out with things like a, a car lighter and a rolled up magazine, and towards the end you're getting uh, you know, a bag of styrofoam and a cup of gasoline, or a Vaseline filled with match heads, uh, or a bucket of hot nails. But a lot of the other special cards are just basic cards that you can use in combat to uh, give yourself bonuses or points or things that you can play on monsters to make the monsters stronger, like this vomit-inducing mutation that gives plus, plus five combat to one enemy. And if they lose, they actually lose a hero point. Uh, you, I mentioned that there's no levels in this game. There are no levels, but there are hero points, which are almost like levels, except hero points are a currency that can be spent uh, to get your hands on things during the game. So it's not so cut and dry as just getting level uh, hero points. And also some, most of the uh, characters in the game don't require hero points. So it's not just about everybody going after the same thing. There's also special cards that are played at certain times. They tell you when. But the game designers encourage people to play these as much as possible. Don't wait, don't save cards, because then you're discarding them when you draw and it's a waste of a turn. Items go on the table in front of you. They give you combat bonuses. Sometimes they are antidotes and you need them to win the game. Sometimes they're a, a, a survivor, which have the gas masks. Again, some people need those to win the game. Sometimes they just give you a combat value uh, that you don't need to use your hands for. Because just like in Munchkin, you have two hands worth of stuff. And sometimes they're just hilarious, like gives plus three in combat if you flail wildly. Your turn is either you draw two special cards or you draw an enemy and fight it. So again, no random combat. You always know when you're going to get into a fight and you can prepare ahead of time. The other rule that I think is really cool is not only can you win by completing your personal victory condition, you can also win by being the last person who hasn't died. They call this last man standing, and it really adds something interesting to the game. You will win if you've managed to be skillful enough to live longer than all the other players. And that's just not a matter of whether you fought a certain monster or played the right card. It's also a matter of what you say to other people at the table and how you conduct yourself during the game. One of my favorite things about this game is the way that it plays with what we think of as the social contract of gaming, which is you follow the rules, you don't cheat, and if you say you're going to do something, you do it. 
In this game, if you agree to give somebody items during the trade phase of the game, then you have to do that. All other agreements are non-binding. And since you can only trade items during the trade phase, if somebody helps you in combat and you agree to give them something, you're not obligated to do that. So why wouldn't you? Well, part of the reason you wouldn't do it is because it's fun. And it, <laughs> it makes the game a lot more interesting when people start getting mad at each other because they're not following through on what they thought were good agreements. Why would you follow through if you don't have to is the real sort of magic to the game, is this idea of the social contract that's at the table. Yeah, you might screw the guy that helped you and be able to keep all the items, but will anybody else help you at the table? I played this game the other day with eight sort of cutthroat players, and the game was a lot of fun. By the time it made it around to me, I was a six out of eight player. By the time it got to me, I think three people were already dead. And people had been playing special cards on each other in just brutal fashion. It was quite excellent. The guy that was next to me, he was doing well. And after he helped me with combat, I didn't want to give him the item. And everybody at the table was okay with that. I actually took a vote and everyone agreed that, that they're fine if I don't give it to them. So not only did I get the combat and I got the hero point for beating the monster, but I decided to screw him and keep all the things and I didn't get any negative consequences from it. Even he didn't seem to remember. He helped me again later and had no problem with it when I gave him the stuff later. That experience for me was really good. There was a very innocent looking uh, girl named Sarah at the table who was like cradling her small infant child during the game and wrecking everybody. And pretty soon she was playing Samford, which requires 300 item points to win. And all of a sudden she's like teetering on victory with 290 item points. And then out of nowhere, the guy who's supposed to get survivors wins the game because we weren't paying attention. The game is great. It's got more than one currency. If you beat enemies, you have nasty that you get as a value. You save the nasty, and if it's a victory condition, it can win you the game. If not, every three points of nasty gives you plus one in combat in either direction you want to go. When people don't remember that, and you're able to totally sway a battle by one point because you spend nasty that you don't need, that's funny. It was really good. I can't tell you how uh, happy that made me when people were doing things that people weren't expecting. And you can also spend your hero points to scavenge through the item deck and find antidotes and potions. You can trade in items that you don't need. by sp For every 40 uh, points of items that you trade in, you can take a new item uh, or you can trade it with other people. Trading in this game is critical to winning the game because if you need four antidotes or five survivors, you have to trade with other people to get it. I have also played the game in a smaller group and the players were not cutthroat, and they didn't really break the rule uh, of engagement a lot. You know, they would play the, the get, take that cards on each other, but they didn't, um, they didn't <laughs> lie <laughs> and steal enough. I have to say that the best experiences I've had with this game was a seven player game and an eight player game. The seven player game involves somebody getting, I've almost never seen anybody get so mad during a game uh, where he like lost his mind. Then he stayed in the game, he didn't like tilt out, but he, uh, it was great. The art on the cards is also hilarious. There's a lot of really funny references and items in here. Even if you've never seen Evil Dead, the guy with the chainsaw hand is still pretty funny. But you've got references to Firefly with big damn heroes, right? You've got these guys, uh, you know, sorry, I thought he was a zombie. You'll shoot your eye out. See, all these are great. The cards are, are, the art is fun. The cards are funny. If you're interested in Where's My Chainsaw, and, and if you're into this sort of game and you have a, a sort of a, a, a fun, vicious, cutthroat group of friends, or even just a group of friends who know how to get into this, I, I can't recommend Where's My Chainsaw enough. I've really had a lot of fun playing it with, uh, with a big group of people like that. It was easy to learn. It didn't last real long. But I do want to say that I, I like this game a lot, enough so that I wanted to put it in a spasm and let more people know about it. Again, check Game Crafter coming next month. Thanks so much, guys. I will see you next week, and I will see you on The Geek. Take care.